Over the course of Season of Discovery so far, some runes have bridged the gap between making a meme spec into viable. Others have redefined how a class is perceived, and a few of them have even had to be nerfed. But not all runes were made equal. There tend to be one or two, or in some cases more runes per class, which are really yet to find their use within the game. Now, maybe it's the case these runes are part of some future overpowered build we couldn't possibly know about because we don't know about all the runes that will be added at level 50 or 60 or maybe they're just kind of bad and they always have been now obviously with so many new runes not everyone is always going to be a winner and have every single one of their runes be good at something but some runes find it hard to be good at well anything especially when they're directly competing with other abilities for the same rune engraving slot so today i want to talk about each class's weakest runes and this isn't necessarily they are bad at the moment but they've pretty much always been in a weak place and this hasn't changed in phase two and yes this is going to include some phase two runes as well but first a quick shout out to today's sponsor factor 75 factor 75 offer delicious dietitian approved meals delivered straight to your doorstep these meals are calorie counted and the weekly menu features over 30 restaurant quality meals including keto calorie smart vegan vegetarian and many more options so no matter the dietary restrictions there should be something for everyone factor 75 also helps keeping you on track with meals as you always know what you'll have to eat well in advance but the biggest benefit is that you won't be spending ages in the kitchen needing to prepare everything as each meal will be ready in about two minutes it's microwavable food but just not in any way you've seen it before and at the moment you can get 50 percent off your first box and free wellness shots for life using my link that means you can choose two free wellness shots from three available flavors for every order whilst you're an active subscriber and you can click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen with your phone now to check them out today. Many thanks to Factor75 for the continued support on the channel. Let's get back to WoW. Let's start off with a warrior for a change. Now, warrior in phase two is definitely in a rough spot compared to how they were by the end of phase one. So it's not looking as though it's another phase of dominance for this class. Well, yet anyway, maybe give them a few more weeks of gear. We'll see how they do. I have to say they're getting two separate runes that affect slam on your belt is a bit of a question mark. Surely one is just always going to be better than the other. Blood surge when you have lots of rage, precise timing when you don't. Creating runes that compete to modify the same ability has always seemed a bit strange strange to me, but then again it makes the ability usable. Though for all the problems warriors may be currently experiencing, and not having the most exciting runes in phase 2 either, if you can say one thing it's that nearly every single warrior rune is playable in one way or the other, and there are very few which realistically you would never ever take. I think if I had to pick a rune for warrior, which I don't really see how it's going to be playable, it would be Blood Frenzy. Not only does it share a rune with amazing choices such as Flagell, or raging blow but it just doesn't do all that much in that it just gives you three rage whenever a bleed ticks your choices for bleeds are rend which is still a mean tier ability or deep wounds which is good but unreliable beyond one target in wrath of the lich king blizzard did a bunch of changes thunderclap no longer had a target cap and it could apply deep wounds both of these things were very big for protection warriors damage and if either of those changes went in vanilla they would improve quite a bit as well then again, it being a rune now, this could be a buff for every warrior identity, not just protection. Either that, or perhaps a buff to Rend could be added onto the side of Blood Frenzy to make it a more interesting option. Until then though, I don't see how this is ever going to beat out your current options. For Warlock, I have one or two runes to cover. From Phase 1 is Soul Siphon. I remember first reading this and basically saying, wow, this is terrible, and uh, nothing has changed since then. Soul Siphon increases the damage of drain effects by up to 18%. The problem is that it shares a rune with the vastly superior Master Channeler, and unless somehow Drain Soul is made into an Execute as it is in Wrath of the Lich King, I just don't see how this will ever be playable. I'm genuinely not even sure how to amend this rune to make it somewhat decent either. And on top of that, you need to invest 5 talent points in the Affliction Tree to get 70% spell knockback prevention on draining effects too, making Soul Siphon into an overall very underwhelming pick. Next are some Phase 2 runes, which are, uh... 
probably a bit undertuned. Shadow Flame at a glance seems pretty cool. It's a frontal AoE that applies a dot effect. The problem is the damage it causes is just comically low, like the whole ability does about 200 damage or less. Its only use in existence is to allow you to press con flag in PvP without having to hard cast and immolate. Maybe that's enough to justify it as it currently is, but if it's not intended to do damage, maybe there could be a slow on this ability as well, just to up its utility a little bit. Another rather average addition for Phase 2 has been Grimoire of Synergy. It makes it so when you or your demon do damage, the other has a 5% chance to gain 5% bonus damage for 15 seconds. It's just too little proc chance for too little damage as it currently stands, and I don't see a scenario where you would opt to take this. Shaman just got a pretty large set of updates to all the runes that I would have picked here, but I think the leg runes are still the ones where a particular choice may win out over the others, but we're still very early into the changes and new metas can take some time to appear. I will say this is a section of the video I had to completely redo after seeing the recent patch, because all of Two-Handed Mastery, Ancestral Guidance, Earth Shield, and Spirit of the Alpha have been buffed, and Shamanistic Rage was modified, so basically you don't have to swap to dual wielding two rock biter weapons before using it now. To me, it seems following this balance patch, Shamans are in a position where each each rune does feel playable in one way or another, and for me this is the class with overall the most well-rounded rune set at the moment. But if I had to try and pick a rune, I still think Ancestral Guidance is probably a bit too niche in its uses, and that too many Shaman identities really require Shamanistic Rage to be functional, because even post-nerf it's 75% of your mana bar and a damage reduction effect only on a 1 minute cooldown. But yeah, Shaman in general, they're looking pretty great at the moment. For Rogue, I literally have a list of runes to go through here. I know Rogues are also suffering somewhat this phase, but your good runes are really good, and your other runes are, uh, yeah, not so great. Let's start it off with Slaughter from the Shadows. So this rune was actually great in Phase 1. It was situationally useful in PvE, and it was very good in PvP. Moving into Phase 2 though, Blizzard reduced the cost of Mutilate down from 60 to 40, and Mutilate is just an objectively better backstab in every way possible. So this rune is basically dead until something changes here. There's a lot of bonus crit chance for backstab through the talent trees though, so maybe this rune could make it so when these abilities crit, you also regenerate a bit of energy, just so it can try and compete with Mutilate a bit. Next is an ability which just got a few changes, Man Gosh. So with the updates, it will now cost 15 energy and will generate 3 combo points on your main target. The problem is, it's still on a 20 second cooldown and shares a room with the 40 cost Mutilate ability, which is both spammable and generates 2 combo points each time. And that, at the moment, seems kind of too good to not take. I've always see Mangosh as kind of a mitigation tool for tank rogues if you want that 10% extra parry over some more resource generation that you can get from other runes. And seeing as it has a 50% uptime, it doesn't fulfill that role. I can see very real concerns later on down the road about rogues maybe hitting mitigation cap and just becoming immune to damage though, so perhaps that's why this can't have 100% uptime. Shiv is in a similar situation, it shares a rune with Mutilate and Saber Slash, and it just doesn't do enough to warrant taking. Guaranteeing a poison in PvP can be nice, but Mutilate just does so much damage at the moment, you're pretty much always going to go there. A new rune for Phase 2 is Poison's Knife, which is Shiv, but ranged, and guess what? It's not very good. Its niche is again PvP, but guess what? The rune is competing with Shadow Step, and that's a pretty hard sell for me. Even though Shadow Step is on GCD, the Gap Closer is just so valuable for Rogue. And to be honest, I'm not sure what you do with Shiv or Poison Knife either to try and make them seem appealing. You could probably put them on quality of life books and they'd still just be okay. Maybe that might be a bit good in PvP, not sure. And I'm just going to mention it here because I'll get a lot of comments if I don't, but yes, Shuriken Toss is kind of underwhelming damage and threat-wise, but at least it's still a way to pull from ranged and get your Blade Dance going before your proper 
properly toe-to-toe -to -toe with enemies. Maybe though it could do a higher percentage of your attack power to your main target, and then it could drop off when hitting multiple enemies. Though I will say that just a flesh wound has been buffed last patch to cause all rogue actions to generate 30% more threat. So maybe despite Shuriken Toss not feeling as though it's the best ability in the game, maybe it's good enough now to get the job done. Priests are one of the classes where nearly every rune feels playable in one situation or another. Okay, maybe Serendipity and Strength of Soul are kind of on the mess side, but at least they're playable if you're healing. But if I had to try and pick a rune for this video, I think I'd go with Twisted Faith. So Void Play got Giga buffed in Phase 1, and it's just been buffed again in Phase 2, which makes it a difficult rune to compete with. On top of that, from what I can tell, Pretty much no priest in any area of content is taking Mind Flay anymore. It's Mind Spike all the way as your filler. Not only does Mind Spike do decent damage, it stacks up a buff which more or less guarantees your Mind Blast to crit, but it also doesn't have that weird 20 yard range issue that Mind Flay does. So yeah, this rune just isn't really getting out of unviable till something changes. Then again, if this rune was good and was worth taking, Shadow would not have a viable belt rune to take and for twisted faith to be decent i think it would need to power up mind flay pretty significantly we're talking about it refreshing dots maybe getting extra range perhaps even doing bonus damage to low health enemies also a side note for priests it would be nice to have a bit more control over your homunculi maybe they could prioritize the target of your shadow or pain at least then you can send them in to attack something and you'll know where they'll be going. Next is Paladin and I think Paladins have a great set of runes in Phase 2 and again basically everything has a place somewhere. The runes may not all be amazing at everything but they're playable if you know what I mean and that's kind of the point of the video. But if I had to choose a rune to call out here it would probably be Aegis. It's basically a replacement for readout but it can proc when you take regular hits instead of needing to be crit. It's just when it comes to tanking your chest Rune also has Divine Storm or Seal of the Martyr, which are both very good threat generators. The other thing is, Block just isn't a very good stat when you're against bosses which do big hits, which is when you may think it would be useful. Blocking Classic is good at stopping lots of small attacks as it prevents a flat amount of damage taken. Imagine getting hit for 100 and you block 30. That's pretty good compared to a boss hitting you for 500 and you still only block 30 because the stat doesn't scale with damage taken in any way. Then again, this rune will be very good for dungeon or AoE farming, all of that stuff. Mage next, and mage runes are kinda stacked. Yes, even stuff like Enlightenment is playable on longer boss fights, and as memey as Arcane Surge is, it lets you win a fight once per 3 minutes, and the 3 minute mage is a build archetype that goes back a very, very long way in this game. So what I want to bring up here are actually two of the new runes to this phase, in Spell Frost Bolt and Frost Fire Bolt. So it turns out their base damages are kind of low, leading them to struggle to see viability over some newer options. I did have big hopes for Frostfire Bolt coming into Phase 2, since the Mage Tree at 40 held so much potential for it, but it's just not happened whatsoever, and everyone's still just blasting away with Fireball or Arcane Blast. I'm still optimistic though, I think these new spells that can double dip into talent trees have a ton of theory crafting potential, and maybe Blizzard are cautious on overbuffing because they know some secret build which is actually super OP. Or maybe at least so next phase when we have more talents to play with, but for the time being neither of these options seems great. Next is Hunter and oh boy did you think I had a list for Rogue? Well wait till we get through all this then. First up is Cobra Strikes. There's a few abilities like this where they only proc off shot abilities, so arcane shot, multi shot and so on, not auto attacks, which means means it's up time just really isn't very good. If Steady Shot was playable, more on that later, perhaps this could be decent, but as it stands at the moment, it's not great. Lone Wolf is another one of those things which I feel as though I'm going to have to mention, otherwise people will comment about it, but it actually is playable this phase when AoE farming as a hunter, which is now possible thanks to Trap Launcher and Explosive Shot. You just have your pet die when pulling and the rune will activate. Carver's next, it has poor base damage and it doesn't 
doesn't scale well with equipping one-handed weapons, and dual wield is all that melee hunters care about right now, so you could make half hit with both weapons, have a lower cooldown perhaps, or just straight up do more damage. Serpent Spread is another underwhelming AoE ability because Serpent Sting by itself just doesn't do enough damage to care about. Not sure how you change this rune to make it interesting, probably need to rework. Sniper training got nerfed pretty heavily before Season of Discovery's release. 10% crit for standing still for 6 seconds is just too much standing for not enough crit. Oh, and it's only for shot abilities just like Cobra Strikes. Steady Shot feels undertuned for our current phase in the game, definitely overshadowed by the new melee specialist rune, which is also on the belt too. In fact, marksman builds for Hunter at the moment are on the weaker end of things, and this rune isn't helping. Invigoration and Master Marksman are runes whose primary purpose is to aid mana costs. But now that a very, very overpowered version of Aspect of the Viper is in the game, which only has a 10% damage penalty, it's 50% in Wrath of the Lich King by the way, all these runes just stop serving a purpose the moment you get Aspect of the Viper. Both of them probably need a rework. Druid is another class where I've had to change up what I'm covering for this video in a big way. So with the recent patch, all of Living Seed, Nourish and a Life Bloom received big buffs which should make them at least worth considering taking. Before the patch, I had all three of these down here as in need of a buff, but Blizzard beat me to it, so good on them I suppose. I'm still not convinced the Living Seed is playable with how much crit we have at the moment. You'd more or less have to go into improve regrowth in the restoration tree to get value, but a bunch of the healing to mana cost of regrowth is in the heal over time effect. Also, if you took a Living Seed, you cannot get Fury of Storm Rage, and the instant cast healing touch proc from Fury of Storm Rage is nice, but what it also gives you is a free spell to fish for dream state procs, which both puts the 20% nature damage taken debuff on an enemy, as well as giving you 50% extra in combat mana regen, which is super strong. So Druid's kind of still in a bit of a strange spot as we currently are. Wild Growth should still be the big carry for your healing all the same, but Druids have leaned into this DPS healer hybrid throughout Season of Discovery so far, and whilst perhaps that was not exactly what Blizzard intended for them to be doing, they are very capable healers. And it's a different playstyle from your typical classic healer too, where DPSing typically is not encouraged at all. So maybe this is a surprise decision discovery of the season and a discovery worth keeping. But those are just my impressions on the runes as they currently are and following the recent big update patch. So let me know your thoughts on whether you're happy with the changes which have just been made and whether you feel as though there are any runes on your class which need to be addressed or buffed in some way for the future. And finally, thank you all so much for watching and listening in and I'll see you all in the next one very soon.